Okay, so I put up these sort of questions, and I want you to to read the questions, spend some time right now thinking about it, talk with your neighbor for three, four minutes. All right, spend three or four minutes thinking about it, talking with your neighbor. Come up with some ideas about how development of multicellular organisms is a complicated, coordinated, but yet coordinated process. So what cellular processes are necessary for development, all right, for a zygote to develop, and then on top, then Second to that, how do scientists, how have scientists studied this? All right, so spend some time, chat, talk, think, have an idea. First, talk about what? Chem, because chem talks about it. Just babies. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Came late, you still got here before class started. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> there you go. All right, so. What are we, what are you guys thinking? What cellular processes are necessary for development of multicellular organisms? All right, so cell division, mitosis. Okay, we go from one cell to two to four to eight, 16, 32, et cetera. All right, so mitosis is absolutely necessary. What else? Ben? All right, so cells have to be specified to sense a proper location. All right, so cell specif specificity, but let's talk about the location. So cellular movement, all right, so motility. All right, so that, yes, cellular movement, we're going to talk about that too. What else? What other things have you going thinking about? That's it. That's all you guys came up with. Those two things. <coughs> what? No, nothing. No, nothing? No. Just drink your coffee, Dean. I didn't. Well, I, okay. <laughs> Abby? Uh, they need to interact eventually to form like organs. So, All right. so there's an interaction. They have to talk to one another. Cell signaling, right, and communication. It's very important. All right. What did we just finish covering in the previous chapter? Gene expression, all right? So gene expression is also important in this differentiation so that a neuron becomes a neuron and not a muscle cell, okay? And that drives, helps drive mitosis. It's involved in cellular communication, right? All of those are processes that are sort of interdependent, okay? They're linked to one another in driving the development of multicellular organisms. All right? So, 
Now, what's necessary to study this? <coughs> or how have scientists studied it in the past? All right, so tech, we'll say equipment, all right? So various microscopes, other techniques, whatever it might be. Dina. All right, so prior, but all right, so stem, stem cells, question mark. Yes, all right, so the idea of a stem cell being that a zygote could develop into any other cell eventually in the body is not a new one, all right? But the let's say, more recent, you know, more recent, uh, the more recent past, it has been developed that you could isolate stem cells, all right, so which has opened up a whole new area of research for stem cell therapy, stem cell biology, etc. all right, but the idea of a stem cell or a cell that could give rise to all the other cells of the body is not a new one, okay? So, but looking at development through stem cells is, is one thing. What, what else? What, so how did scientists study development prior to being able to isolate stem cells? Because this development has been ongoing and looked at since the days of Aristotle. Okay? Since ancient Greeks have looked at, since almost near the beginning of time, how, <coughs> where do babies come from, type of an idea, all right? And it was, it was the original thought from Aristotle was that men somehow impregnated women with a little human, what we call a homunculus. And it, then it developed in the, in the woman and then came out and it was all men sort of propagating the line, okay? So what did you have to look at at that point to be able to study development, uh, human development? Genetics just came from looking at different traits. All right, so we can look at genetics, pass, passing of traits, right? We have to have some type of, what did, Ar what in the time of Aristotle, what do you think he, he looked at to study development? Sarah, humans, people, they had to have a model organism, something to look at, something that showed that development's occurring, all right? And so model organisms is another important part of this. So in this chapter, we're going to talk about development of multicellular organisms, how it is done, right, important processes that are involved in that, okay? We're going to talk about stem cells because that's an important part of development, all right? And we're going to talk about gene expression that helps to drive these things, all right? So that's sort of the overall concept of this chapter. And then towards the end, we'll talk about how cancer is a change in the normal, can be a change in the normal developmental process or the normal cellular process. Okay, questions on that up to there. All right, so development. Basically, we talk about development of multicellular organisms. We'll, we will use fertilized egg developing into an adult form, right, <coughs> adult organism, and the program of gene expression that's involved in that. All right, and we have to have certain model organisms that's involved. We'll talk about stem cells and how they're a key to the overall process. And then we'll actually expound upon that and so go through how stem cells are studied, all right, and what they can be, how they can be used, all right. And basically, the root of all this is that orchestrating and controlling gene expression is important for all of these processes to occur, all right. So, you look at your fingers, your hand. You, most, most of you have five fingers, right? Well, four fingers and a thumb. Hopefully, that's the way it works. Now, if I told you that your limbs, 
during embryonic development actually developed like a little paddle. That ends up being your limb bud, this being the body, right? So this what's called the limb bud. How do your fingers develop? How do you get fingers from that paddle looking thing? Gene expression. Well, there's gene expression. What else has to happen? How does the area between, does anyone know anyone with webbed feet? Okay, what's that from? What's that? They used to be. So that what happens is the area between your fingers, those cells die off. All right. So part of this whole thing is regulating gene expression. How does the body know where the thumb is going to be as opposed to where the pinky is going to be? So how do you know that this area is going to end up being the thumb and that's going to be the pinky? And then you, you order digits. And then how do you know that it's going to end up with one, two, three, four, five? And then the area in between those fingers, those cells die off. All right? It's related to gene expression. And I would tell you that chickens, mice, etc., their limbs develop the same way. All right? And if you do something to change, say if we added something right here, we put a chemical right there on that part that changes the gene expression of those cells, you can change how limbs develop. So that instead of having a thumb there, they actually have a pinky or another finger, right? And this is a common genetic disorder where you have what's called polydactyly. Uh, anyone ever, or, or syndactyly, which is lobster claw type. It's literally, they have two digits, a thumb and two digits because their limbs didn't develop the right way. Okay, again, all related to gene expression in terms of development. All right, so this process of gene expression, all right, leads to different cell types in a multicellular organism. We know that you start as a fertilized egg and you end up with muscle, nerves, skin, kidney, liver, stomach, epithelial tissue, connective tissue, whatever it might be. All right, a host of different cell types give rise from one fertilized egg, all right? And we also have known from last semester that cell types are organized into tissues, organs, organ systems, and eventually that whole organism, correct? So we talk about, Ben talked about cell specificity, cell motility, movement, all right? In order to provide the structure for these things to occur, Right, which is all dependent upon gene expression. Right? So gene expression orchestrates the development of animals. And changing that is what leads to most birth defects right, of, um, and alterations in development itself. All right? So here's this... <coughs> What needs to happen, all right, the cellular processes? We talked about cell division. You have to multiply, go from one to two to four to eight, whatever it might be, all right? So you have to have a, eventually ending up in the, you know, trillion cells that make up your body, okay? You have to ha be able to reproduce and divide into multi cells. From that, certain cells differentiate become neurons, muscle, skin, etc. Right? And the cells, the group of cells change shape or the whole ball of cells, for instance. We we are not we and most animals are not a ball of cells. Right? 
just kind of living there. No, we have definitive shape and structure. Okay? And so the change in structure and the change in shape is what's called morphogenesis. All right? So when you, the first slide, when we began class thinking about what needs to happen, basically you guys came up with these three things. You didn't say it in this, in this sort of precise man, concise manner, but you know what's going to happen. Right? You can visualize going from one cell to a multicellular organism, things that need to happen. Going from fertilized egg to what you know as a newborn, okay, it, there's, you understand intuitively what has to happen. Okay? So, here's a fertilized egg of, the, of a frog. Okay? And a newly hatched tadpole. All right, so you have fertilized egg. How does it get from fertilized egg to tadpole? And then from tadpole eventually to an adult, there's also another morphogenesis that occurs, which is what? What happens from tadpole to adult? What change in shape occurs? Right, they grow the leg, the legs grow and develop, and the tail <coughs> recedes. Okay? You'll note that, what do you notice about the frog egg, the fertilized eggs up there. All right, so there's a white side and a gray side. All right? And frog eggs are one of the uh, largest single cells that you can see, probably the smallest single cell that you can see with the naked eye. All right? And what you see there is there's a difference already from one side to another, right? Do you think that plays an important part? Yes. Okay, yeah. Now you know top to bottom, <coughs> okay? You know that the gray side is going to be the top and the white side is going to be the bottom. The white side will actually end up becoming, will, will become the yolk sac, right? And the gray side will end up becoming what's most, of the, what's most of the animal. So right at the one cell stage or right at the, at the beginning of this fertilized egg, you already have a plan set out. There's already a program in place. All right? So before, even before fertilization occurs, there's already a plan a set plan, program, an idea about, about development in place even prior to fertilization. Okay? How does that happen? Where does that come from? Well, eventually evolution, yes. But I was thinking more immediate. Where is the program for fertilization and development of a fertilized egg going to originate from? Where does the, where does the egg come from? So where's the, where is all of that going to come from, sort of setting the plan? It's going to, be, it's going to come from the mother, right? And in, yes, in meiosis and development of the egg itself, okay? So that will sort of set... You're like the first set of instructions right at the beginning to, to direct immediate development, all right? Cell differentiation will occur, and that's the process by which cells become specialized, all right? Morphogenesis, process that gives an organ of its shape, all right? Really, it's a changes in shape, all right, to morph. And your differential regulate, gene regulation, or gene expression, results from genes being regulated differently in each cell type. And what does that depend upon? What does differential gene regulation depend upon? Transcription factors, right, and transcription in general, all right? So what we're saying is that the, what I've said when I looked at the, the structure and the color of frog eggs was that materials in the egg, right, that different color, right, 
They actually can set up gene regulation that is carried out as cells divide. All right? Because normal cell differentiation, or right after fertilization, especially in the frog egg, mitosis happens very quickly. All right? You end up with something that occurs very quickly. Um, cells divide very quickly without getting any bigger. So I said that a frog egg is probably one of the, lar the smallest cells that you can see with the naked eye, right? So you think about how big that is, but how big are cells normally? You need a microscope to see them, right? <coughs> so you basically have a really big cell ready to begin it. Now fertilized egg comes in, and now that cell goes from <coughs> 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 8 without changing the overall volume, right? So there's no, what we, we call it, isovolumetric cleavage. So it splits in, so basically the overall volume of that egg splits into, is divided between two cells, then four cells, then eight, then 16. So each time, each round of mitosis, the cells inside the egg are getting smaller. They're dividing the cytoplasm. Okay? And when they divide the cytoplasm, because there's a difference in how the cytoplasm of that egg is constituted, they end up having different constituents. Okay? And you'll see that in a little bit. All right? So your egg cytoplasm contains RNA, proteins, and other substances that are distributed unevenly in the fertilized egg. All right? These are what's called cytoplasmic determinants. So RNA, proteins, some lipids, carbohydrates, whatever it might be. All right, they are in the cytoplasm. They will help to regulate gene expression at the beginning of cleavage. All right? So these cytoplasmic determinants are, are maternally derived. So during the process of meiosis and the process of development of an egg, okay, these are, are put in and they are held there. Right? During meiosis and, and in the formation of an egg, the egg is actually sus in a suspended state of animation in meiosis too. Right? It doesn't finish meiosis until after being fertilized. So in preparation for that, RNAs are produced, proteins are produced that are held in a suspended state of animation within the egg. They are set up for fertilization. Once fertilization occurs, those proteins are made, genes are regulated that are important for initial development. Okay? But as the zygote divides by mitosis, the result, and then after fertilization, you have division that's occurring. As division occurs, different cells end up with different parts of that cytoplasm. Okay? So that it might look something like this. So here you have an, here you have an egg, right? And say over here, on this side of the egg, there's a large amount of protein, a certain transcription factor that's going to regulate a gene, that's going to be important for head formation, okay? And it's on one side. Now, the cell divides. All right, so now we have cell one and cell two, right? There's a big difference there now, right? Cell one doesn't have that transcription factor, while cell two has an abundance of that transcription factor. So now what can occur? Is cell one going to produce the gene that may help for head formation? No. What you've done here is now you've developed what we call an axis formation. You've determined which, which side is anterior versus posterior. What is going to become the front and the back. Now these cells divide again.
3 and 4. Actually, let's do it this way. <coughs> Say 3 and 4. Okay? Now, cell 2 has the most of that transcription factor. Cell 4 has less, and cells 1 and 3 have none. Right? The point of this being, because of the way the cells divide, those cytoplasmic determinants get divided among and sort of compartmentalized among the cells within the division. Different transcription factors are going to determine and, and direct a different set, a different gene expression pattern that will lead to different behavior, differentiation, morphogenesis, etc. All right, so everything sort of starts with the A. All right. Now, this is a cell sitting lineation. We don't need to do it. So, here's another, a better visualization of it that you use in your book. Cytoplasm, right, determinants in the egg. Here's your unfertilized egg. Different transcription factors, whether they're circles or triangles, division occurs. They're going to be split between the two. Okay? <coughs> Questions on that? The other thing that occurs during development is what we call induction. Right? Cells talk to one another. Cell signaling is important. Right? One cell is going to produce something that's going to tell the other cell how to behave and vice versa. Okay? So I said at the beginning that this sort of fertilized frog egg, right, which it looks like this, and it's basically black up top and yellow underneath, right? We said that the black part ends up becoming most of what we call the animal, right? And the white part ends up becoming the yolk, okay? The top, right, is what we call the animal pole, and the bottom is what we call the vegetal pole. All right, so there's a distinction between the two. All right? Most of what's underneath those cells that are in the yellow produce a signal that, te that tell these cells up here to grow. This is what's called the process of induction. It's a way of one cell inducing the other cell to behave a certain way. How does it do that? It does it by cell signaling. All right? And we'll see how that works right here. So here's some single transduction pathway, right? We don't need to know what that is. Okay? But what you're seeing here is that you have this cell, right? It's producing something it's being released from the cell, and it's going to induce a certain behavior by the cell nearby. Right? So this is induction. So those cells that are in the bottom of the egg, in that yellow area, okay, they are producing something that are going to stimulate the cells above it to grow faster. Right? <clears throat> Questions on that? So we have both cytoplasmic determinants in the egg to help direct this, and then from that, there's also induction by nearby cells. Cells nearby induce other cells to differently. All right? So induction, signal molecules from embryonic cells cause cause Transcriptional changes in nearby target cells. All right, so one cell inducing another cell to behave. These interactions between cells, this excuse me, induces differentiation of specialized cell types. All right, so now you have differences in cell types itself. All right. 
So, what is, so we have cytoplasmic determinants and induction. What does that do? We've just been, mitosis is ongoing. We're producing more cells. When do we get to the point where the cells begin to become something else? All right? And this is basically what we call cell de determination versus cell differentiation. <coughs> A cell can be what we call faded or determined to become something based upon its transcription factors, its area, where it is in the, in the embryo, okay? The cytoplasmic determinants, transcription factors that are present in it, okay? And this is what, what a cell is committed to go down that, that pathway of irreversibly be faded to whatever it's going to be. All right. So at some point there is a, a point during human development where all your cells move and they become, depending on where they are, they are now nervous system versus skin, okay? depending upon how they have been, the change in shape that has occurred. Okay? And determination precedes differentiation. Right? So a cell can be determined to become eventually all the nervous system. Okay? But it hasn't been differentiated to become an astrocyte versus a neuron or um, an ependymal cell versus a neuron. All right? So those are different types of nervous tissue. Questions? All right. So what really is the difference between the two? Determination is understood in terms of your molecular changes, the expression of genes for t tissue specific proteins, while differentiation is observed in cellular structure. You know what a neuron looks like, right? You've seen the pictures of neurons that, you know, sort of look like this, right? Axon, right? Terminus, whatever. Neuron looks like that, okay? That is a distinct cellular shape with a distinct cellular function. But prior to that, there are changes in gene expression that signal this shape to occur. Okay? So determination, the fat cell fate, is determined prior to differentiation occur. Okay? Questions? All right, so for instance, to study muscle determination, all right, researchers grew embryonic precursor cells in culture and analyzed them. So here we have, we have a stem cell. Now let's see what happens if we add a factor that will eventually, hopefully, turn muscles into muscles? And can we come up with a distinguishing factor that is important for determining that those cells are now going to become muscle? All right? And what they found is that there's a, a set of regulatory genes that are important in determining neurons versus muscle, okay, for instance. One of which is called MyoD. MyoD is a transcription factor. MyoD is a transcription factor that stimulates the expression of muscle-specific genes, skeletal muscle-specific genes, okay? So where MyoD is turned on, those cells then are induced to become muscle cells. But if MyoD is not turned on, then those muscle cell-specific genes are not turned on, right? So it's a sort of a master regulator. All right, here's a graph showing. All right, here's your embryonic precursor cell. All right, there's your master regula regulatory gene for myOD is off. Other muscle specific genes are off. That is a, for this up here, for all intensive purposes, is a stem cell. Okay, it has not differentiated yet. It still has the ability to become muscle, skin, eye, whatever, neurons. Okay, it hasn't 
set determination yet. But now, in this, something happens, whatever it might be, your treatment, okay? Now the cell is now a myoblast. Why? Myo D is present, okay? At this point, the mRNA from Myo D is present, but those muscle cells, specific genes, haven't been turned on, okay, yet. But Myo D is important. That's a transcription factor that stimulates transcription of those other muscle-specific genes, and this is where you end up with your muscle fiber. A fully differentiated cell, all right, MyOD is, will, is a transcription factor that will stimulate its own, the transcription of its own gene, so it's self sort of stimulation, <coughs> but also there's other transcription factors that are intermediate, and then eventually you get the muscle proteins, myosin, et cetera, cell cycle blocking proteins that are important for skeletal muscle, full di differentiation, right, of those cell skeletal muscle cell types. Right, so this is a gene expression program that drives differentiation. Questions on that? All right, we're going to stop, and we'll stop that point. All right, but before I, I let you go, let's see if I can find this. Your quiz is not including anything on Chapter 16. Okay, so nothing from today. Your quiz on Friday will be from translation through Chapter 15. But translation and differential gene expression. Chapter 15.